Good day everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Sarala from University Tun Hussein of Malaysia. Uh, today I would like to share with you uh, a topic regarding future trajectories in teaching learning practices for STEM education in Malaysian secondary schools, a scoping review. Ladies and gentlemen, understanding students' needs for a learning environment helps teachers deliver instructions in ways that can motivate and interest students for the uptake of the subject content. This shows the importance of needs analysis. The concept of motivation and interest are interrelated where motivation fuels interest and interest sustains motivation to learn. When STEM instruction is delivered effectively to motivated and interested students, it can help them develop 21st century skills such as critical thinking, independent learning, communication, collaboration, problem solving, digital literacy, creativity, and self-reflection. STEM lessons or projects need to be designed based on real-world issues and hot topics so that students can engage with activities in meaningful ways and realize the importance of the STEM industry itself. Ladies and gentlemen, let's highlight the problem. The number of students enrolling for STEM options at upper secondary school levels and STEM majors in tertiary education keeps declining at an alarming rate. This goes against the national agenda of producing graduates with a 60-40 ratio of which 60% should be STEM graduates. Now why is this happening? Two reasons. First, decrease in motivation and interest among students to learn science and maths related subjects at secondary schools. Secondly, it was found that there is a low exposure to STEM in secondary schools due to inadequate integration of science, maths, engineering design process, and technology in science and maths instructions. This actually highlights the gap of the study, which shows that teaching learning practices in schools do not reflect the guidelines and objectives as proposed in the STEM education framework. Ladies and gentlemen, the main purpose of the study was to add to the current body of literature on the latest teaching learning strategies for STEM education from the psychological domains of motivation and interest. This study addresses two research objectives. First, to explore the current teaching learning practices that affect secondary school students' motivation and interest to pursue STEM. Second, to suggest ways to improve teaching learning practices in secondary schools to increase students' motivation and interest towards STEM. The data collection involved a qualitative method using scoping review technique on more than 50 studies published between 2013 to 2021. The data analysis involved thematic analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, the first part of findings indicated STEM teaching learning practices. Five themes emerged. First, the inability to allocate time for STEM projects among teachers. Second, dependency on theory and practice-based learning. Third, lack of exposure to solving real-world problems. Fourth, engineering design process only seen in robotic-related projects or competitions. And lastly, Technology-based learning and ICT facilities are only available in selected schools. Therefore, based on the exemplified 55 studies, the review found that majority of the current teaching learning practices for STEM failed to realize the focus and objectives of national STEM framework. Ladies and gentlemen, the second part of findings uh, was related to students' motivation and interest for STEM, which are influenced by five issues. First, authentic learning environment. Second, performance in assessment. Third, teachers' teaching styles. Fourth, future goals. And fifth, social economic status. Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, conclusions and recommendations. 
To achieve the same objectives for Malaysian secondary schools, improvements should be considered in terms of first, instructions by showing clear STEM integration in science and maths curriculum and providing equal access to ICT facilities and competitions. Second, teacher support by providing improvised instructional design and continuous training. Third, student development, ensuring students are more stimulated to develop self-efficacy and exploration skills for learning. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening and stay safe. Signing off, Sarala.